when he was here, I asked him about what was lynchian. And I took that right out of your piece. And I'm sure he just looked at you and blinked very slowly. <laughs> well, he didn't have a great answer, because I don't think he thinks that way. He obviously doesn't think that way. There was, I mean, yeah, there's a part in the essay that, that kind of does this academic, let's unpack the idea of lynching. And what lynching means is something about the unbelievably grotesque um, existing in a kind of union with the unbelievably banal. And then it gives a series of scenarios about what, what is and isn't lynching. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer was borderline lynching. Um, borderline. But, well, the refrigerator. And, and, and actually what was lynching was having the actual food products next to the disembodied bits of the corpse. Um, I, I guess the big one is, you know, a regular domestic murder is not lynching, but if um, the man, uh, if, the, if, the, if the police come to the scene and see the man standing over the body and the, the woman, let's see, the woman's 50s bufant is undisturbed and the man and the cops have this conversation about the fact that um, the man killed the woman because she persistently refused to buy, say, for instance, GF peanut butter rather than Skippy, and how very, very important that is. And if the cops found themselves somehow agreeing that, that there, were, there were major differences between the brains and that a wife who didn't recognize those differences was deficient in her wifely duties, that that would be lynching. This weird, um, th this weird confluence of very dark, surreal, violent stuff and absolute, almost Norman Rockwell banal American stuff, which is terrain he's been working um, for quite a while, I mean, at least since, at least since Blue Bell. You think the failure of Dune was good for his career? Um, I... Uh, because it made him understand a system that he didn't want to be part of. What happened to Lynch with Dune, and that now I'm getting a lot of this from my research, which was published up. It's not like, you know, Mr. Lynch and I had coffee and he told me this stuff. But Lynch's career for a while had a kind of Richard Rodriguez arc to it. A racer head like El Mariachi, yeah, right. this enormous, enormously cool independent film, um, and, and it attracts the attention of people with money. The first one is Mel Brooks, and Brooks hires him to do The Elephant Man. And the Elephant Man is, is a fantastic, fantastic film, um, and it's lighting and atmospherics, nothing else. So anyway, because of that, you know, De Laurentiis hires him to do Dune, and now this is, Dune at the time is, is equivalent to what like Twister or The Rock would be now. It's this enormous, this is a, this is a product, and there's all this money at stake, and uh, Dune itself, the novel, I don't know if people read it anymore, but it's a tremendously complicated science fiction novel. Anyway, Lynch, so you don't need an hour-long narrative of this, but Lynch does the thing and doesn't do it all that well, but what really happens is the money men come in and they cut, like, I think 35 minutes out of the movie and it renders the movie incoherent. I mean, literally incoherent. And it was a huge flop. And I think Lynch ate the flop and decided that what he wanted to do is he wanted to, you know, rule over small films rather than serve large corporate ones. I mean, he was really one of the first, we see a lot of them now, the, you know, Cinemax and Fine Line directors, these kind of independents um, who are doing stuff a little out of the mainstream but still getting national distribution. As far as I can tell, Lynch really, Lynch really pioneered that, that ground. He was really the first one to be doing small, eccentric films that got a very wide release, with Blue Velvet being the best example. Um, and this may be entirely false. I mean, I'm not a film scholar. But you like movies. I do like movies. A lot. Front row. Okay, me too. Blue Velvet comes out. Blue Velvet is um, a type of surrealism. It may have some, it may have debts. There's a debt to Hitchcock somewhere. But it is an entirely new and original kind of surrealism. It no more comes out of a previous tradition or the postmodern day. It is completely David Lynch. And I don't know how well you or your viewers would remember the film, but there are some very odd... There's a moment when a guy named the Yellow Man is shot in an apartment, and then Jeffrey, uh, the main character, runs to the apartment, and the guy's dead, and he's still standing there. There's no explanation, you know? He's just standing there. And it is, it's almost classically French, fr franco philistically surreal. Um, and yet it seems absolutely true and absolutely appropriate. And there was this, I know I'm taking a long time to answer your question, there was this way in which I all of a sudden realized that the point of being postmodern or being avant-garde or whatever wasn't to follow in a certain kind of tradition, that all that stuff is BS imposed by critics and camp followers afterwards, that what the really great artists do, and it sounds very trite to say it out loud, well, what the really great artists do is they're entirely themselves. They're entirely themselves. They've got their own vision, their own way of fracturing reality. And then if it's authentic and true, you will feel it in your nerve endings. And this is what Blue Velvet did for me. I'm not suggesting it would do it for any other viewer. But I, all of us, Lynch very much helped snap me out of a kind of adolescent delusion that I was in about what sort of avant-garde art 
could be. And it's very odd because film and books are very different media. But I remember, I remember going with two poets and one other student fiction writer to go see this, and then all of us going to the coffee shop afterwards and just, you know, slapping ourselves in the forehead. And it was this truly epiphanic experience. отношения фантазии с кем-то, кто не является реальным, строго, чтобы стимулировать неврологический ответ. Так как интернет растет в ближайшие 10-15 лет, и виртуальная реальность порнографии становится реальностью, мы будем иметь, чтобы развивать некоторые реальные механизмы внутри наших кишок, выключить чистый, нелегированное удовольствие. Или, я не знаю о вас, я придется покинуть планету. Потому что эта технология просто собирается становиться все лучше и лучше. И это собирается получить легче и проще, и все более и более удобным, и все более и более приятным, чтобы сидеть в одиночестве с изображениями на экране, дано нам людей, которые не любят нас, но хотим, чтобы наши деньги. И это нормально в низких дозах, но если это основной основной продукт питания вашей диеты, ты умрешь. Ну, давай, осмысленно, вы собираетесь умереть. 